If you want to see me use the Lise Watier prune à porter for the first time, then stick around. All right, let's get this out of the way. If you like the contents of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on this channel in general, please consider subscribing. That would be awesome. I am so excited to be working with this little quint today. I have been waiting. I was doing a focus on Elizabeth Arden, and I was doing a focus on Lancôme, the two holiday sets, and I was also doing a focus on Viseart. And now I am ready to play with Lise Watier. I have done swatches of this quint, and I will definitely leave the swatches link right here. And I haven't, I, I swatched it and I put the plastic back in. You know, I'm such a nerd that way. So let's get rid of that stuff. And here is the palette. Other than swatching, I have not touched it, so I'm very excited to be playing with it. I have, you can tell on my eyes that I've done something already because it's in the afternoon. I put down a very basic wash of color. I put vanilla, wheat, and grounded uh, from the Smashbox Matte Exposure Palette. That's really all I have on the eye. I have in my waterline, my uh, upper waterline, I have a uh, smoky black pencil from Elizabeth Arden, and I have the Definicil Mascara on. It's a very plain eyeshadow look, and I will have no trouble covering that up with the shades in this little quint, I am sure, but I guess we will find out. I am intending on using the shadows here very much like was recommended in the Prune à Porter look set. You can see that in the swatches video as well as far as what the, the, the framework was for applying these shadows to the eye. I definitely won't use this quint every single time that way because there are there's a variety of colors. I can do all sorts of different things. But for this first one, I thought I would maybe just kind of go with what the suggestion is with a lot of this deeper purple on the outer V. And I, if you look at my nails, I even painted last night my nails of uh, Deborah Lipman purple. This one is out last night. And, but it's a lot darker on the nails once it dries, but that's what it is. And then this one is Gold Fever from Sephora that I just put on my ring fingers. I think that's a very nice combination. But anyway, I digress. So it was all in honor of using a purple palette today, and I tried to use a lip and an outfit that would not clash with the purple so that we give it its fair shot. Now I'm excited to dig right in, but um, I will possibly use some of the sponge tip applicators as well, but I will use my fluffy brushes and um, more precision brush brushes as I, would, as I would normally any other um, quint or palette. And I will use the mirror in here as well. It's a nice big mirror for a little palette or quint, whatever you want to call it, but let's just get into it. Um, I'm going to go right in with the crease shade, which is a taupe. This one right here. Let's just give that a go. I don't find that mascara application bothers me at all if I'm going back in later on with a different look. As a matter of fact, I do um, day to night transformations on a regular basis just because we do different things at night than we do during the day. So. That is going to be just fine. And I think I'm going to do one eye completely and then do the other eye so that um, I don't waste your time. All right, some more. With a fluffy brush, it takes a bit more building because you're not as precise with the application of the shadow. I think you can already see one eye to the next, the difference. I think I'm going to just deepen it up a little bit more. But this is meant to be relatively tame. Okay. All right, I like that so far. I'm going to use this very light pink on the brow bone and the inner lid. Very, very inner lid, more toward the inner corner, so let's do that. Ah, I 
put the shadow, I always do that, put the shadow on the wrong side of the brush. But I will just work with it. Anybody else do that? I've asked it before, but just I just keep doing that, putting it on the wrong side. I'm not thinking about where the brush is going. Drives me a little bit nuts because I regret it most times. Right into the right in the inner of the eye. I've got some fallout already. Let's get rid of that. Okay. A little bit more on the brow bone. Okay. And I'm going to go right away and use the deep purple on the outer V. And I'm going to use that same angled brush. I'm just going to wipe it off. This is my color switch. Nothing exciting, just a washcloth. A lot cheaper. All right, deeper, deep in the outer V. All right, let's do that. Now when I swatched these, I didn't find they had a ton of payoff, but at the same time, you know, there's trade-offs, right? It's easier to build up when a shadow is like that, so it might not be a bad thing. Into the crease. I like this look already. It's pretty. It's quite pretty. I'm going to go on the lower lash line with the smudger brush with that deep purple. I want to build it up bottom and top progressively if I need to go back and forth. Now I did pick this quint specifically. I think there are five or six options. But I picked this one because of green eyes. I want to see how, how much it can bring out the green in my eyes. I have a bit of green and uh, mustardy brown. Okay, let's keep on working with that. I don't mind it at all. I'm just going to go in the crease with it, just a tiny bit more of that purple and just blend it. Blend, blend, blend. See if it sticks quite a bit. Not bad. I'll just add a little bit more. I think it looks really nice so far. Okay, now this taupe was suggested for the inner lid. So I'm going to go with that next. I'm going to go back, I'm going to get rid of a few brushes. I'm going to go back with my angled brush. So back with this one and just wiping it off a little bit. So I've got a lot of purple on it. Okay, now into the taupe. Ah, again, wrong side. Jeez. Okay. Taupe on the inner lid. And this taupe is really the shimmery shade out of this palette. That's, that's quite pretty. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, and then the last shade that I have not used yet, this pink was, oh, sorry. This pink right here was deemed as an accent color just inside of the dark purple. So I'm going to try that next. I think I'm just going to deepen the uh, outer purple just a little bit and then put the pink on top. 
I don't want to put the pink on and then all of a sudden get rid of it by going back into the purple. So I'll do the purple first. So I think it could use a little bit more. And I'm going in with tapping motions just to try to intensify the color. Yeah, and then I'm going to go in with the pink. And I want a very um, precise application, so I'm going to go with a smaller brush. I'm surprising myself a little bit. I'm going to go in with a Morphe brush. What, what is this one? Uh, MB27. It's going to see if I can be very precise with the pink because in the suggestion for the from Galise Watier pamphlet, it was a very precise application right around here. Just to give a little punch of color before the dark shade toward the outer V. I'm just going to go one little bit more and then go over a tiny bit with the purple the deep purple. I think I might even go with my finger on this one. There's a tiny bit of iridescence in the purple or the, the pinky purple, but it's just not, it wasn't just not showing up, but now it is. Okay. Okay, so tiny bit, tiny bit back with the purple on my angled brush. And I think we're okay. All right, I am going to, um, <laughs> I'm not satisfied with the brow bone, so I'm going to go in with this brush and just get a little bit more of that soft pink, the soft pink onto the brow bone. Oh yeah, better brush, I think. I think I didn't, didn't choose the best brush the first time. Okay, and I'm going to go in with the smudger brush and just go in with that deep purple just a little bit more again. All right. And there was a suggestion of going in with the taupe on the inner lid, so I'm, you know, lower lash line of the inner lid lower lid. And so let's do that. We just got rid of a little fallout. Now it's not all quint fallout. This is actually, I think, a little bit of mascara flaking as well because I had mascara on already. But I, I like the little, little bit of pink on there. That is not something I would have thought of doing. So that is really neat that the, the suggested use included that pink right at the, the top there. I think that looks really good. The taupe on the lower inner lash line, I don't mind. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other eye and then um, kind of freshen up the mascara and the eyeliner and come back and show you the final look. Okay, I am back. Here is the final look. I think it looked, I think it looks pretty good. So here's what I did. I added the uh, black ebony, le crayon col from Lancôme. I put the uh, Annabelle Skinny. It's a really neat mascara wand. Apparently it's a, a dupe for a MAC mascara. I'm just not familiar with it. So I put that on my lower lashes. I think that looks good. And then I just refreshed my top 
um, eyelash mascara, the Définicile from Lancôme. So a lot of Lancôme stuff and Annabelle. And I think it turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, that is. Now the only problem with this these what's here is that because it's so shiny it shows fingerprints like crazy and it's very reflective as you can see right there <laughs> i i am a fan i am a fan of the way the eyeshadow applied i am a fan of the colors i think it did exactly what i was hoping for it to do And I swear the fallout, it just feels like it's just mascara flaking, so it's no big deal. But I, I would not hesitate to wear this look for a night out or even maybe a little bit of a lighter version uh, during the day. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's a, that the colors are very flattering. It's, it's colorful, but it's still appropriate in many different settings. So yeah, I'm um, I'm happy with this purchase. I am glad I tried the Lisoitsi eyeshadows. I am happy with the color I chose. I also think that the recommendation for placement of the shadows was very good. It's a better experience than my experience with the Makeup Forever suggestions. And yeah, a very flattering wearable look. So. Very happy with this. This was money well spent. Thank you to Drea Cien for the suggestion of Lise Watier as a brand. My first experience has been very positive so far. If anything changes with how it wears, I will definitely report back, but I have a feeling it won't be an issue. So yeah, good experience. Thank you for joining me to uh, take a look at what this turned out to be. I appreciate it very much. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.